Hello, 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 folks. Happy Wednesday for you all. Hope this video gets up on Wednesday. If not, then rip it's on Thursday, which is Meg Day. That's right, folks. It's the time of this video. Whether I upload it today or tomorrow. If it's today, it's Wednesday. If it's tomorrow, it's Thursday. Tomorrow, Meg to the Trench is released to theaters. I know it's technically showing Friday, but there's always Thursday night showings. I'm going to try and get in to see it Thursday, but. No promises, because I work till 9 o'clock, so it's kind of tough, but today, we're going to be taking a look and reading two articles that have come from the director, Ben Wheatley. Um, the first article is talking about the possibility of a Meg 3, which I'm really excited to talk about. The second one is going to touch on um, the, the budget and the allocation of money towards uh, CGI and effects to like that. So, not to waste any time here, this first article, um, Ben Wheatley, wants to expand the franchise of Meg 3. It says in quotations, there's a lot more to explore and that world is very rich. So we scroll down here. Um, while Ben Lately's latest project is at the theaters, Meg 2 of the Trench um, director already has his sights set on what's to come, expressing interest in helming a follow-up to the Killer Shark flick. The upcoming film is a sequel to 20 Teams of Meg, directed by John Turtletop, National Treasure. The creature feature provide Proved a successful box office despite a largely negative critical reception, laying the foundations for what Wheatley is hoping could become a full blown franchise. Well, there is a frick ton of books, so you know that's not surprising. Um, speaking to Total Film Magazine, the director is cautiously optimistic with the series in the future, saying, You don't want to talk about it until it's out, but I hope to see it through installment. There's a lot more to explore in that world, it's very rich. The internationalness of it is very interesting, and what he thinks the key to the first film success was, and what he believes could provide foundational to the future's. Um, the franchise of the future, really said. What's so smart about the first film is that it's not rush hour, it's not East meets West, or we're all confused about each other adding that. It's just people working together, being in an everyday adventure, and it just happened to come from all pieces all over the world. It's that good for audiences, and it's a good message as well. He's basically talking about the diversity film. We have African American people in there, we have Asian people in there. Um, you know, Statham's obviously an Australian actor. Um, the upcoming film will see Jason Statham return to starring in the 22 original. John joined forces with legendary action star Wu Jing, the money team of the Dragon Emperor, as the pair lead a research team on the exploration to the commercial depth the team find more than they bargained for as a synopsis of the familial. So we already know this, so we're not going to uh, touch on that. Um, but um, yeah, so that is basically him saying, hey, you know, Meg uh, 2 was really fun for me, and um, I'm hoping that I can come back and direct a third movie if possible. So I, I really appreciate his dedication to uh, saying that this is going to be a probably really, really cool franchise to have. And you know, at the time of this video, um, you know, there are six Meg books with with um, the seven seventh big purgatory, which is being released next year um, if it's done, you know, on time. So it's just nice to see that we have. Um, a guy who's just involved with this as much as uh, the um, author was Steve Alton, and now we're getting potentially a, uh, maybe a Megverse. You never know, folks. All right, I know our second article here. So, uh, Meg to the Trish, director of Ben Wheatley, wanted every dollar of the budget on screen, which is what I really appreciate. I'm not going to lie, when I first saw a trailer for this movie, I kind of had a little bit of the issues with the CGI, especially in the scene you see this picture with the shark. I don't, something about like the, the redness and the darkness of the underground, like, the, the Megs look kind of weird to me. Like, I, they kind of look like plastic, but like, now that I've seen more of this shot of the thing, I'm really excited to see the ambiance of this dark area, because the first movie was a lot of blues and stuff, and now we're getting a lot of reds and darks, so that's going to be really cool to see. But, um, let's read this article here and see what he has to say. Can we all just take a step back and appreciate how truly bonkers it is that Ben Wheatley made a sequel to the Meg? Ben Killis Wheatley, Ben Howry's Wheatley, is one of the most fascinating leaps from the realm of weird indie movies to studio filmmaking we've seen in recent memory. I like a good bit of escape as much as the next guy, but I still did a double take when the dude was known for a pitch making uh, black movie, seemingly built to avoid traditional crowd pleasers, sign on and make the next Jason Statham, punching a pretty struck shark movie. Um, that's why it was surprising to me that this big budget franchise had he jumped onto. What I'm not surprised about is the word that not only is really embracing the absurdity of this uh, franchise he's doing so by taking the filmmaking part of it very seriously in the recent issue of 12 Film, Willie reveals that he was very eager to avoid a common budget pitfall by spending the town downtime forced to plan by COVID to play a sequel to the ninth degree, to the nth degree, um, as he said. By the time I got to Meg, I'd done a lot of effects work and 
I had an inkling of it. And because of the pandemic, I had an extra six or seven months, so I stored more than the whole thing, every frame of it. So when we came to start it, it's a massive amount of prep that had been done. I don't like the idea of these tales of people making up on the day. I wanted every dollar on the screen. Plus, waste means more absurdly giant shark action. While that approach seems like the logical one in the way movies were made for decades in terms of modern stage filmmaking is oddly not the norm. Superhero movies in particular are known for their, uh, finding their films and reshoots. It's going out when they were mostly winners, even before their current slump. Um, which is part of the reason why budgets have been blued so much. It costs a lot to spend multiple months reshooting. Sometimes it saves a movie, sometimes it makes it worse. But it's unquestionable that it's a costly way to make big budget movies, especially those with heavy effects, VFX pipelines. Indecision is a problem in the big budget realm, and the core reason why we keep saying these new franchises lost so much some of the film, really saying that he storyboarded every inch of Meg to the Trench is actually refreshing to hear. He wanted to make sure he had all the kinks worked out in advance, and felt like he could put every penny of the film to substantial budget. The first film wasn't surprised at pulling in over a half a million dollars at the box office against the current budget of 130 million on the screen. Gotta love that level of commitment to what could have just been a bit of a goofy big budget absurd and fun. I mean, I think really knows what the audience expects from a movie like Link to the Trench. You know, I think shark action, and if you can deliver that to them by them making sure that there's no waste, then I guess he was a great choice of the job. So, basically, this is saying in a, in, in a long run, um, he started murdering the entire thing. Like, that's wild to me. Like, because start, storyboarding is not easy. They come up with artists do it before they make their art. They'll make the little boxes with the old little stuff, and then eventually they'll have people, have people with the art. Um, artists will have them come in and draw them out and plan them out. So the fact that he storyboarded every scene so that he could save the actual development time when it came, and um, I'm interested to see how much budget this movie actually costs. So basically, like, they put a lot of money and time into the CGI. And um, I'm really excited to see how the sharks look in the final product of the movie because obviously when you see a trailer, sometimes stuff is sort of compressed down to a 1080p format. So you know the real theater is a 4K video. So it's gonna be really cool to see how well the CGI pans out at doing this. But um, really interesting articles here. I'm really glad that they've hired a guy who seems to have his head on his swivel here. Not only wants to make a sequel to this movie, but potentially um, a megaverse. But uh, that's gonna wrap it up, guys. I don't want to speak too long. You know, all these short videos have been doing well for me, so I want to keep them going, but, um, really huge week for the channel. Meg 2 The Trench comes out tomorrow, or today, if this video comes out tomorrow, it's probably going to be uploaded today. Um, if you guys can, please freaking smash the like button. I've been getting really good comments on the videos lately, I really appreciate it. Hit the like button, please, it's just I'm trying to build this channel to be the large, largest channel, the largest shark ever. The Trench, the Oceanic Super Predator. Praise the Odinus Megalodon from the Miocene era. Folks, that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you for watching, and remember, stay the fuck out of that heat.